Graphical models are an intuitive visual way to represent a model consisting of a set of hypotheses and the connections between them. They are also known as belief networks, probabilistic networks and Bayesian networks. A key advantage of graphical models is that they describe the local interconnections that collectively make the model work. Graphical models are described through directed acyclic graphs and we have the nodes um, representing hypotheses or in other words the, the random variables of the model. Then we have the edges and, and they represent the direct influences between the hypotheses. And then we have labels both on nodes and on the edges and the node label on node X represents the probability P of X corresponding to our belief in the truth of this hypothesis X. And also the label on the edge from X to Y corresponds to the conditional probability P of Y given X. So let's give an example. Um, we want to reason around the chances of the grass in our yard uh, getting wet. And we know in this model that rain is going to cause the grass to get wet and this is what we represent in the model. We have one node for um, rain and one node for the grass getting uh, wet. And we know that in our area the probability of having a rainy day is 0 0.4. Um, and also we know that the probability of the grass getting way wet if we have a rainy day is 0 0.9. And, and this represents the fact that maybe the ra rain sometimes is so light that the uh, it's not enough for the grass to get wet. So it's 0 0.9 rather than 1. Now, one thing that is really good to observe from the very beginning is that even though we only include the rain as a cause for the grass getting wet, in this model we don't exclude the chance that the, the grass might get, get wet also for other reasons. For example, because the sprinklers got turned on. And indeed, indeed we have also this other conditional probability, there is a chance that the grass is going to get wet even though uh, it didn't rain and, and that we set in this particular example to 0 0.2. This edge we have in the model, this is a, it, it represents a causal interaction. It just says that, uh, you know, if it rains, the grass is going to get uh, wet. And again, even if in the model the rain is the only apparent cause for the wet grass, the model does implicitly include that there might be other reasons for the grass to get uh, wet. And, and that's indeed um, captured in this second uh, conditional probability. Now these probabilities we have, they specify the model completely. Um, having these, we are also getting the probability of a, a non-rainy day um, and that's going to be, so probability of having a non-rainy day obviously 0 0.6 uh, because the probability of a rainy day was set to be <clears throat> 0 0.4 um, and uh, we also get the probability of the grass being wet and that's written as the probability of having the grass wet is the probability of the grass getting wet on a rainy day and that's written through this conditional probability uh, times the probability of a rainy day plus the probability of um, the grass getting wet on a non-rainy day times the probability of a non-rainy day. And given these um, uh, numerical values in our example, we can calculate this to be um, on one hand 0 0.9 times the probability of R was 0 0.4 plus this one was set to be 0 0.2 times 0 0.6. And that turns out to be uh, equal to 0 0.48. This model allows us to do a so-called diagnostic inference. Knowing that the grass is wet, what's the probability that rain is the cause? And remember that there might be uh, at least two causes, uh, may maybe even more in other examples, for the grass to get wet. But we can reason about what was the chance that rain was the cause. Um, so we can do this uh, diagnostic inference and we can calculate the probability that it rained when we observe the grass being wet in the following way we are writing the probability of having had a rainy day given that we observed the grass was wet, wet, 
we can do this using the Bayes rule and this is equal to the probability of having a wet grass on a rainy day times the probability of a rainy day divided by <coughs> the probability of observing the grass being wet, wet. And we can plug in all these numbers and we calculate this to be 0 0.75. So knowing that the grass is wet has increased the probability that it rained from the 0 0.4 which is by default um, given the uh, amount of rain we get in our area to 0 0.75 simply because we have observed that the grass was wet on that day. The key insight that graphical models give is the interdependencies between variables of the model. Obviously, we say that two variables or events, uh, x and y, are independent if the joint probability um, uh, p of x, y, is simply equal to p of x times p of y. We also say that x and y are conditionally independent given another event z, if the joint probability of x, y given z is exactly the uh, conditional probability of x given z times the conditional probability of y given z. Or equivalently, we, we can also have that the probability of x given y and z is exactly the probability of x given only z. And the thing is that a variable in a graphical model is typically only adjacent to a small number of other variables, whether it's um, the successors or its predecessor. Nodes that are not adjacent are either independent or conditionally independent. And there are three elements, uh, three elementary or canonical cases of conditional independence that we will discuss in the next videos. On one hand, we have the head to tail where this node represent the, so this variable represented in this node and this one, they are conditionally uh, independent. Then we have tail to tail where these two nodes are conditionally independent. And we also have head to head where these nodes are conditionally independent. And they are independent um, through this middle variable. This one in this case, uh, this one in that case, and, and this one in that case. But we will discuss uh, all of these uh, three canonical or elementary cases in the next videos.